we've seen before something about conversion. Uh, I told you that we're going to apply it to our design equation. So the first one I want you to show is the batch reactor, which is not a continuous flow. It's actually a unsteady or transient process. Actually, it's a batch process. So it's the only one which is going to be different. So pay a lot of attention here. Now, by definition, this is conversion of A. It's the moles of A being reacted per moles of A being fed. Okay, the case in batch, or at least in the batch reactor, we're going to have N of A, which are the moles of A at the outlet, or at the ending, or at the final step. And I got N of A zero, which are the moles of A at the inlet, or the initial amount of moles of A. Normally, by definition, N of A initial is bigger than the final amount because you're reacting. So you have 100 moles and you react, I don't know, X quantity, you're going to have less than 100 moles. Let's say you're going to have at the ending 20 moles of A. Or best case scenario, you turn everything to the product so you got zero. Now, pay attention in this equation. What are the moles of A being reacted? Well, the moles of A are the initial amount, which is the 100 in this case, minus the final amount, which will be, let's say, 20. So, if I, I used to have 100 moles of A at the beginning, and I still have 20 moles at the ending, that means that 80 moles disappeared. What does that mean? That 80 moles just reacted. So, that's the moles of A being reacted, which is this number right here. The moles of A being fed is way easier. It's essentially just the initial amount of A, which is Na0. So now you got your definition. Let's say, let's back to here. Let's go back here. X of A equals the total amount of moles being reacted, which is this here, we told you. Right now it's this one here, divided by the initial amount of being fed, which is here. Okay, and I will think that this is useful, but the other, let's say, when you do it, sometimes you want to know the amount of A at any moment. Well, of course, you're going to have it depending on the conversion. So you got the, um, I just uh, go and find out, or solve for, solve for this one. You get this one here, times 1 minus X of A. This one is also very useful, actually is the one that we are going to be using the most. But don't worry, it's the same equation, it's just mathematics. I just move this one here and this one minus this one divided by the negative. You get this equation. So perfect, we got our, let's say, conversion equation in terms of moles being fed and moles at any moment. And we got our design equation. If you don't know where I got this you, or you have no idea, go to the batch section. I got a class in which we use this uh, molar balance equation and we got this. So what I'm going to do essentially is to use this equation and substitute it here. Essentially this right here, I'm going to put it here. So you can see I only changed this part here. And since the total amount of moles being fed at the beginning is a constant, so that's a value that's not moving. I can take it away from the derivative. And if you know a little bit of derivatives, I can split this into two derivatives. This one, derivative of one with respect of time and the negative of the derivative of x of a with respect of time. Uh, probably you know this is a constant because the derivative of one is constant or zero. No, actually it's zero, not that constant, it's zero. This is zero and I just got this negative out and multiply it times n of a or initial amount of moles of a. Now, just to let you know, the right side is exactly left alone. You have no actions. We did not do anything there. So now we got these equations. What I will do is the differential form. I want to get this derivative in the left side and I change this one here and since you know I love having this minus R of A which is the rate of reaction reaction of A and we are very happy we have volume we have an initial amount 
of A being fed, we got this rate of reaction and this derivative. So I like it. Uh, I will learn. I will learn this one. Many people like to develop it and learn the final equation, but that's not that good of an idea because maybe you get this volume that changes with time, or I don't know. I just prefer to have it like this and develop develop it by myself. So let's develop it. Let's do a little bit math. So the first thing I want to do is to change the rate of reaction to here because it's dependent on the conversion. It's very important, guys, that you know that the rate of reaction depends on the conversion. You got x of a with 0 and x of a at 30% and x of a of 50%, probably you're going to have different rates of reactions. So this rate x1 is not the same as x2 and it's not the same as x3. So please, guys, be sure to know that rate of reaction depends on conversion. Now, uh, I change the differential of time, I change it here, and since this is a constant, I can just drop it away from the integral. I integrate this left side from zero to my final conversion. Why zero? Because that's my initial quantity. Uh, at the beginning of time, I have zero conversion. I have zero time, zero conversion, and at in a time or any time, I have my conversion. So we have this, this is exactly the same as before. Now we're going to do this. Uh, this part right here, I'm going to send it, multiply into this side, so that's why this one goes up and this one goes down. Now the limits stay the same, zero to conversion. I cannot develop this because I don't have an expression for the rate of reaction. If they tell me rate of reaction of A is 1, well, yes, I could integrate very easily. If they tell me that the rate of reaction is 1 divided by the concentration of A times the volume times the volumetric flow divided by 2, I will need to put this here and solve. And then I'm left with this integral right here, which is so easy. It's actually the integral of 1 is T. I need to value it in these two values, which is T minus 0, which is T. So I got this equation on time. So this is my final equation if you really want it like this. I don't recommend it, I prefer it in differential form, but it's up to you guys. And this was how we change the batch reactor design equation in terms of conversion. See you in the other videos. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.